Okay, welcome to the Wednesday workshop, everyone. I'm gonna have to keep my eye on the uh, waiting room. Again, apologies about that. I didn't mean to hit that as a selection, but hopefully you all are with us now and a few more joining. If you don't mind just muting yourself, that would be great. Um, I'm all for conversation as we go. And if you feel the need to pipe in as I'm as I'm speaking for clarity or or to you know add your own two cents, no problem. We'll definitely have time for that at the end as well. And also, you know, pop them into the chat. If I'm off on a tangent and I don't see you or you don't feel like it's the right time to unmute yourself, um, just throw your questions as we go into the chat and I'll be sure to, sure to address them at the end. I try not to pack too much into these slides today, everyone, but um, because I really wanna make sure that we get to the case studies at the end. I promised you that would be a big thing today. And I think that um, no matter where you are in your website journey, just seeing the way that people are utilizing Squarespace, Shopify and Kajabi, which is our favorite platforms here at Social School and uh, the ones that we're teaching, um, it really just helps to see them in real life, as we all know. I can't take you into the dashboard of their sites, but we can certainly identify what it is that they're using in terms of, you know, navigation best practices and third party integrations and user journey and flow. And then we've got some SEO tools for you today, too, so we can actually you know, do a little digging on how people's sites are functioning from a mobile friendliness and site speed perspective. Um, and of course, doing the same tests on our own sites, if we dare. So um, does anyone before we begin, have any questions uh, after last week Wait, for your online business week one? Hi, Kathy. Welcome, everybody. Um, any questions that that maybe you were left with after that lightning bolt of a fast talk. I'm going to try and talk slower today too. Where we covered, you know, some of the foundational aspects. We did a platform comparison of uh, Shopify, Squarespace, Kajabi. We talked a bit about WordPress, a little bit about Wix. Anything for anyone? I guess I should open my chat window. So I'm not just, you know. Um, and actually, as you're thinking about that, I'm just going to make sure that you all have today's uh, workbook. So I'm just going to drop it in the chat. And if you weren't able to download it from, um, gosh, how come I can't drop that in there? If you weren't able to download it from uh, our network there in the social club, then you'll be able to pull it right out of the chat as a download. I might have to ask Jake to help me out with that. <laughs> Jake, did you get it downloaded? Everyone can chat. Yeah, I don't know why I can't add that file. I oh promise God. I will. Um, okay, well, let me direct you then back to where you came in, which was within the Mighty Network. And uh, within the event, I made a little update today and there was a download. So we, we've got a few exercises. We don't have hours to go through them all, but they're going to plant some seeds and we are gonna take some time to just at least think about the seven exercises that I provided, provided you with. If you do come along for the ride of the website launch lab with us that runs May 3rd to June 1st, our 30 day build where you get to choose which platform you want, choose your own adventure. And then we're gonna have a, a collective go live party on June 1st, which is gonna be pretty awesome. There'll be plenty more of where that came from in terms of exercises, actionable kind of prompting questions that force you to step back and look at you know maybe the lack of um, function of your own navigation and your own page and user journey and all the rest of it. So don't be discouraged if you don't have too much time to go through the exercises today or you feel like you need more guidance in them. We're building for 30 days for a reason. Some of these things take longer than just a one hour webinar, but I didn't wanna keep things from you either. I want you to have as much as you possibly can to either go your own direction or come along with us in May, which I would love it if you did. Um, the login for Zoom, please, so I can use my desktop computer. Um, I'm going to ask Jake, if my pal um, and neighbor, if he could maybe pop in the direct Zoom link so I can get going here, if that's okay. Sorry about that, Harry. I don't know how you're asking for that link if you're already on the Zoom, but, you know, stranger things have happened. <laughs> okay, so thank you for whoever laughed at that. I'm really not. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm needed after all. <laughs> okay, here we go. So let me just share my screen. Um, and, uh, and like I said, any questions? Sorry, guys, I'm really uh, 
altering here. Any questions, pop them in and we'll get going. Can you guys see that okay? Oh, yeah. you're amazing, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so you guys, last week we, well, first of all, we talked about who this was for. Who is this for? Anyone, it doesn't mean that, I had someone say to me yesterday, this stuff really seems geared to someone launching a business from scratch as opposed to an existing market or an existing business. And no, truthfully, it's not. This is like come as you are and where you are. There is no shortage of companies and many of us who have existing websites that we're not happy with or that are not doing the trick. And what we teach and what I'm hoping this workshop prompts you with is just the way forward that is cleaner, simpler, and smarter than maybe what you've been doing in the past. And it's built on a platform that's really future friendly. So we're getting rid of our, you know, 400 page sites or even our 40 page sites. And we're really scaling it back to what matters because we know that the attention spans of the people landing on our website, which amen if we get them there from social, from our e-newsletter, from our blog, they've landed there. We need to keep them there and we need to solve their problems as fast as we can. And we are all in the market of doing that no matter how big our business is. We've been helping um, marketers, entrepreneurs, and, and small businesses in particular tell their stories for a decade now. Our new academy just launched, and I'm really excited that we have 15 new courses going live in the next two weeks. Our 200 and 300 series of our 360 series, our 200 and 300 level. So that includes SEO, customer journey, advanced advertising, et cetera. So last week on our first ever Wednesday workshop here in Social Club, uh, we talked about you know, the setup and packaging your offering. What is your unique value proposition and why should I care as your user, as your traffic? What is it that makes you different from everybody else out there? And are you stating it clearly? So how do we take our existing service-based business, package it up and sell a product online? Amen if we can get there or vice versa. We're a product-based business that's going to create some recurring revenue and repeat business by taking that product of our physiotherapy skills or our, um, I don't know, Botox clinic. And we're, they're on my mind because I built a Botox website over the summer for a friend. And we're packaging it in a way that gets people to purchase more at once. You're creating, your flower shop is not just a one hit wonder that you did that wedding one time. You're now circling back with a follow-up program for the existing customers that you worked so hard to build and you're not always hunting and fishing you're able to have repeat business which is so so important so uh we looked at all of those things last week the replay is live if you missed it and this week we're talking about scaling and succeeding let me just go straight to the bullet points here so navigation and user journey looking at the fundamental UX and UI. You've heard those a lot and don't be daunted. It's just the experience that your users have, UX, and then the interface or the platform that you're using, UI, and then additional kind of elements that add to that user interface or you know website. Um, and how do we meet our audiences constantly changing and constantly growing expectations on those fronts? The site assets this is my favorite part because this is where we've actually said to people when they've come to build websites with us, you are not a candidate until you and your board or your team figure out a way to scale back your website by like 80%. You're way overdoing it. We need to work backwards and reverse engineer the assets that we need by starting from the end. We know that we have five pages or 10. We know that we, and we're leaving the blog out of it for now, but just five fundamental pages home, about, offering, or products or services, contact, maybe news, or updates, or blog. And then we're figuring out what we need in terms of copy, so headlines, taglines, um, and then, you know, paragraph kind of the, the, con the body content that is not 5,000 words. It's like max 200 words per page. And the imagery. And then we can go and gather those assets if we don't have them. We can utilize stock if we need it. We can create little GIFs or animations or icons, et cetera. We're not gonna leave out the search ranking factors here. This is super important. And this actually, um, while this isn't an SEO program, it would be, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about what Google needs out of your site. And every one of the CMS or content management system website platforms that we teach has this functionality built in, which is wonderful. You can go above and beyond in ways that we can talk about all day long and we do in our SEO classes, but we're gonna talk about the basics today that make sure your site is seen by Google, 
and any other search engine and that it ranks because we absolutely need it to do that if we want to be found and actually drive traffic. And then finally, the integrations and automations that can really make our site function well and uh, you know have the marketing taken care of as well. So people aren't just landing on our site and they're forgetting to drop their business card in the fishbowl on their way out, they're leaving something behind. Maybe it's a little tracking pixel, maybe it's a, a you know, email address that they've signed up for our e-newsletter our e with or a contact form filled out or whatever it is. Okay, so, oh, thanks JD. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Um, she said, thanks, congrats on 10 years. I appreciate it. I'm aging by the minute, but so be it. So navigation and user journey, let's look at it. First things first, a seamless user experience. Oh my God, I love this website. I totally get it. Mixed with a beautiful interface that's also fast and mobile friendly is a really nice magical website that we all aspire to. People look at it and they're like, this is amazing. I actually said that on the phone the other day to someone. Your website was just like so clean. Oh, I know, it's a storage company. She said, do you mind me asking, are you shopping around? And I said, no, your website blew me away. Every question that I had about on-site, off-site storage, the places between, your moving prices, I might be moving, um, was answered in your FAQs and your blogs and one article led to the next. And in 10 minutes, I got everything I needed. And you called me within five minutes of me filling out a form on your website like, nice work, you've earned my business. And it was just a matter of meeting my pretty basic expectations and answering my questions. So the good news is, I said this last week, but it's a wonderful time to own and then leverage and grow your own awesome e-commerce enabled website if you want e-commerce. They don't all have to be e-commerce. If you remember last week, we talked about sort of some of the basic types of online sites or websites, but e-commerce being that we can have you know, an online store, we can package digital products, we can create a membership or online coaching, but we also might just want a portfolio site, which is a nice way of saying a basic website with information, or maybe it's a blog or, you know, a lifestyle site that's more about photography. It's a, it's, you know, showcasing our work. All of those things work with the platforms that we talk about. Um, and if you have one that's e-commerce enabled for future, even better. So we know that today's browsing behavior is high maintenance, <laughs> high expectations, and limited patience. And when I say high expectations, honestly, I feel like maybe that's the wrong word. Because as I just described, we don't need it to be like life-changing. It just needs to work and get us the answers we need. But if it doesn't do that, you and I all know we're out. We're going to go find something else that actually loads and answers our questions. We can all agree, I think, that we have shrinking attention spans. <laughs> We want these things to be searchable and we want them to be near us or at least, you know, understand who's behind the company if we care about locality or if we just care to know who's behind this because, you know, seeing the humans and knowing what they stand for behind any kind of brand today matters. To people. We want to know what, I, what steps to take. So this is really important. That second last one there, the, the seamless journey from point A to point B, but what do I do next? I'm a moron. I don't know what to do when I get on your storage website. I've never had that in my front of my house and I've never had to move across the country or whatever. And so tell me what to do next. Lead me down the garden path. If I like what you're saying and you're giving me bit by bit information and you're leading me in and wanting more, not overwhelming me on the homepage. So I'm like, I have no idea what this company's about. You're answering my questions and then I get to pick a little bit, but it's very clear where I should go depending on what I want and then I'm going to have something solved for me by the end. So when it comes to our expectations um, and our, uh, our must haves, I suppose, as the company behind our websites, we need to have really clear offers. What are you selling? And we talked about that last week with the six word bio, which we're gonna revisit today. The mobile friendliness I've mentioned and the load speed, yes, but that intuitive use. That's that, you know, Apple story where it, intuitiveness or simplicity and brevity is harder than long-windedness, than too many buttons. You try to create a phone or a device with one button and people at first were like, what is this? Well, now we can all open our Apple products, a brand new iPad, and you just know how to use it. You don't need to read the manual. That is intuitive use. And it is so 
uh, just goes without saying that it's what's expected today. Nobody wants to read a manual on a tech piece, let alone your website. So when I say an obvious and satisfying journey, again, we get what we need out of your site and out of what we came for. So the clear offering. I said last week, if you confuse, you lose, and it can't be more true. And if you aren't sure whether you're doing this right or wrong, you need to ask some strangers and ask your mom and ask your sister and ask your kids, do you understand what I'm selling in five words, in one intro on my homepage? And if not, revisit. Do they know within three seconds of being on your site? And remember, our attention span is now shorter than a goldfish, so it's less than eight seconds. Do we know what you do, sell, make, or offer? What's in it for them? Me, the greedy, time-constrained list or viewer. Who you are and what to do next in that very order. So when we've got homepage magic, we've got those you and your statements that we talked about last week that really address me and my problems and not you and your company earnings or how great your people are. If you recall, I used the energy industry example of the pipeline company that we've been working with that you know, their homepage was filled with billion dollar earnings reports, investor documents and rah rah about how great their employees were out in the community, which is all wonderful, but save that for your intranet or your investor documents emailed separately. When I land on your page, if I have any stake in your company or any interest in doing business with you or any impact on your license to operate, as we all seem to now have with pipeline companies, um, it better speak to me and, you know, win, win us over. So I love Cody and Sue, our neighbors in Inglewood. Uh, Ingrid has really defined her brand and her values. And then she speaks to people, not because she wants to say, hey, I, I love the, the West and fashion and, and I combine it and I'm a wonderful fashion nista. Because she, if this is for you and you've got, you know, the same kind of interests, you're going to click in and you're going to keep going. The one on the left, achieve your potential with Talkspace Online Therapy. If that's not for me, I'm out. And if it is, awesome. This is exactly what I was looking for. Then there's some proof points right below with those icons of media coverage. We talked about that last week. What a wonderful way to showcase what it is you've been featured on or to, to show some social proof behind your expertise with a media page or uh, clippings, etc. So when we say to someone, you know, hey, so what do you do? What we're really saying in a lot of ways, particularly when we're shopping and not at a cocktail party being friendly, we're, be, we're saying, you know, what's in it for me? Is this where I should be? Does this site have what I want? And if not, again, I'm gonna bounce. So our very first exercise is that six word bio that we talked about. And if anyone is brave enough to share theirs in the chat, that would be awesome. And once you nail this, it's really nice because you can utilize it in spoken word with introductions, but you can also, you know, shorten it on your homepage. So, you know, if I help people connect with their customers because I'm a sales expert, um, I might be able to say that on my homepage, we help people find their customers. Maybe that's a little too vague. We help those navigating divorce find their feet again. And then I'm not gonna say that in real life or face-to-face, -face, but I can find a way to kind of shorten it for the right context. And of course, have jump off points for other taglines um, that you know, are needed throughout my site or my social media posts, et cetera. So this is something we've been teaching for a long time. And honestly, it's the starting point for a lot of things, social media bios, um, copy on our websites, anything to do with you know, a, a product or, or a webinar or a, a coaching program where you need to describe what you do. Diana, amazing. We help people restore, restore health to their skin. That is awesome. And then if she wanted to, Diana could take that eight word bio and say, restore health to your skin. Restore your skin's health to its blah, blah. So we can tighten it up even more. Our friends at Kiro Chiropractic over on 14th Street in Calgary, um, I might have mentioned this to some of you, but they had they came to work with us for one of our social media retreats. And they were talking about how they're, you know, finally these two friends, uh, Sohan and Keith coming together. They wanted to launch Calgary's most comprehensive wellness facility for physiotherapy, acupuncture, chiropractic, et cetera, et cetera. And instead we shortened it or we came up with the tagline, become the healthiest person you know. And then again, it became this really nice entry point on their website of like, yes, I want that. Tell me more. 
how do I get that? I love that, Diana. Thank you. If anyone else wants to share their six word bio, please, by all means. And it doesn't have to be right now, but if you want to think about it. JD, we thwart isolation in communities with homegrown fun. Amazing. I think that says community icebreaker. Um, that is awesome because it makes me go, what do you mean by that? When I was in the newsroom, if someone would, would send me a three page press release that gave away everything and overwhelmed me, I couldn't even give it my time because I just didn't have the energy or the time, the bandwidth to dive into it and decipher what they were trying to say. But if someone gave me a statement like that, are you interested? Yes. How do you do that? What do you mean? Isolation is really real right now. Tell me more. Find your next great vehicle here, Dale. Awesome. That is really great. I love that you guys have all used. Well, okay. The, the number one and number three. Nope. Sorry. Just Dale is using the word your. That's awesome. I would challenge JD and Diana to also try and use maybe instead of we thwart isolation in communities with homegrown fun, thwart your isolation or your community's isolation. Can you use words that are more about you and your versus the company? Connecting communities of similar passion through apparel. Awesome. Find your community with similar passion or find your like-minded, passionate community through apparel. Hopefully you guys get the idea. Keep them coming. You guys are amazing. Okay. So is your offering clear to any and everyone? Well, this is a pretty tough order, but hopefully it is because again, we've got that three second test. So within a few moments of being on your site, does your visitor know what I do sell, make or offer, which in their words would be what? And they might not get it right with your technical or industry jargon, it doesn't matter. You change tires, perfect. What's in it for them? You're gonna change my tires and you've got openings next week or you do it with pride and you're so proud of your pricing, or you do it with openness, honesty, and integrity. Amen. Um, who are we? Oh, you're Calgarian or you're, uh, you know, third generation Canadian, or you're, uh, you know, a dad of six <laughs> and, or maybe you just believe in community so strongly and this is your lifelong dream, whatever it is, but a little snippet about who you are comes after those initial intro statements. And that's sort of sales copy 101. You lead them down the page and the who you are comes in about halfway down before the guarantee and the intro of the pricing and all that. Um, so I love this question, who we are, but who are you really? You know, when we do these questions kind of um, onboarding with, with people that are going to work with us in our bigger programs, we'll say, well, who, who are you? Oh, well, you know, we're an apparel company, a local t-shirt shop. Okay, well, who are you really? Oh, well, we're a bunch of disenchanted former government employees who didn't want to sit in front of a keyboard anymore. And now we spend half of our time out in the wilderness collecting t-shirt ideas and the other half, um, you know, building a dream online or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be that long. Um, I love Harry. We can refinish your ugly tub. Harry, I haven't told you this, but you did my tub. We'll talk about this later. Seven years ago, you refinished my tub, Blackstone refinishing. And I know you're not doing that anymore, but if you are, let us know. I couldn't believe it when I saw your name. Um, I'm in Inglewood. You might remember, it was an awful tub, but you did an amazing job. Um, what to do next? Okay, the final piece. Where do I go from here? Is there a button? Tell me more, sign up, call to action, register now, get on the wait list, book a call, and don't forget to follow up. When we talk in the final portion today about integrations, and I'm gonna show you on our case studies and real life examples, um, awesome, Harry still in business. When we look at those, you're going to see a lot of chat bots in the bottom right corner often of websites. And that is for a reason. They're not meant to annoy, they're meant to serve. And as I said last week, if you get people to the point where they want to ask you something, they have a question, they want a book, they want to buy, but you just need to finish that final objection or, or remove it, or you just need to kind of hit it home for them. That business is yours to lose or that subscription or that phone call or whatever it is. So if you do not have some kind of live chat or it doesn't have to be live, but it has to be some kind of like immediately available Q and A FAQ contact form that you're responding to. We, I know we all have our issues. I'm right there with you. Limited staff, people down with COVID, lots of things going on. But if that's your only thing you're responding to make it top of the list because, um, yeah, it's just so, so important to capture people when they have that final inkling to buy. 
Okay, who is this for? Um, this one we're not going to go deep into, but I'm going to leave you with it, and you can you can screenshot this or come back to it in the replay. But this here is 20 questions if you need more support on who exactly is your audience. And I often say that you know one of the best pieces of advice I ever got. 10 years ago when I was taking my business from a service of a marketing agency to a school and packaging it up in courses and products online to sell to strangers. I created a customer avatar and I did it for a hypothetical woman that I knew was in Inglewood and she I knew because of my time on the Inglewood board that she was frustrated that she wasn't getting the same kind of attention and media coverage, this is going back 10 years, that her neighbor was who was quite out there and loud and getting all the attention. And I built my first course, PR Pioneers, for this woman. Her name was Janine. She's lovely, but I didn't know much about her. And I created this entire pretend avatar of Janine. What magazines she read, what wine she drank, how many cats she had, whether she was married, where she liked to vacation, the things she talked about, what mattered to her, her deepest desires, her biggest fears. And then I felt like if I was to sit down with my hypothetical 44-year-old Janine, I could have told her exactly how I could help her. And it didn't feel like a sales pitch anymore. And what happens is when you speak one-to-one -one versus one-to-many, big box, you're speaking boutique style, you are capturing people in such an authentic way. And you capture so many more people as a result. So don't be afraid to define one or two or three if you need to, customer avatars or ideal personas for yourself, if nothing else, so that you can speak in a really direct human way. And so many of us get so afraid to go live on Instagram or send out that e-newsletter or even publish an article on LinkedIn because we feel like it's going out to 10,000 people. It's not. And really, I have to remind myself of this all the time, every time I get insecure, shy or whatever, that I'm speaking to one person and just bring it back to that because I know we can all do that really, really well. And when you do, when someone phones you and you pick up the phone and you talk about your services, you're probably really passionate about it. And as soon as we feel like the microphone is held on a bigger platform, we get so clammed up. So I really encourage you to go through some of these um, questions, thinking about how you're going to price your offer, who it's for, how you're gonna talk about it are really important if you still feel like that is a necessary part of you know bringing your uh your online uh persona to life diana these aren't in the workbook because i didn't want to totally overwhelm you with a 20 page workbook but like i said you can go back to these and if anyone hasn't um or screenshot this or whatever this is part of our website launch lab but again i just i hate putting too much in workbooks and then leaving people really kind of frustrated that they didn't get any kind of understanding of what we we're talking about so in your workbook you have seven exercises if you want to Go back to them or do them as we go. Six word bio, we've talked about the three second test, really important. And then we're coming to your site map. Oh, spoiler alert there, Squarespace. Okay, awesome. Um, so we talked about where should they go? This is where the interface comes in. So we've talked a bit about UX and the UI piece is a bit more technical. It just, you know, things like modern design and that mobile friendliness easy navigation, again, the intuitiveness, and then smart integrations, which we will look at. But let's first just quickly talk about the easy and simple navigation. A few golden rules for those of us who like to name our nav some funky things because it makes sense to us, but people are just like, where's your about page? I don't understand. So does it make sense to any and everyone? And page titles are so important aesthetically and for ease of use for your user, but also for Google, because they are part of the HTML language that makes up your website. Page titles rank at the top when it comes to the keywords you're using on your site. When Google's bots literally, they're like spiders that crawl every single website on the internet and they store a map or a, a picture of your site as a site index, and they will pull out first your page titles. Then they'll pull out your- <laughs> So H1s, H2, H3s, if whatever comes next is you're saying to Google, this is the most important because it's a page title. This is the next most important because it's a header, a header two, et cetera. Again, that's an SEO function, but it's, it's really important for, for a number of reasons, most of which is just simply understanding and ease of use for your user. Are you using drop down secondary navigation? And I caution you against this because as your mobile traffic starts to outrank your desktop or your laptop traffic, which is happening for most of us, 
your site becomes really difficult to navigate with big thumbs or thumbs of any kind. And so if you can avoid these or be just cautious and careful about them and not have a site that's dependent on a lot of drop downs, but it's either scrolling or there's just a few, you know, places for us to tap that really, really goes a long way. Are all of your sites pages properly linked to from the nav and connected to each other like water pipes. So you could actually draw out as we're going to do your top five or seven maybe tops max pages in your main nav and then what comes off of those and they don't have to be in a drop down it's just that if i go to your second page offerings there's three pages from there that i can click through to you're a you're a flooring company when i go to offerings or products i can see that you have residential commercial renovation those are my next three pages that are going to come off Maybe they'll be in a secondary drop down, or maybe they're just nice thumbnail entry points for me when I land on that page two. But bottom line, if they're not connected, Google gets a bit confused. We won't go too deep into it, but it's nice if you can have everything connected via the nav um, so that Google knows to track everything as one piece. Are your calls to action on each page clear and concise that lead me down that garden path? We can see this in our Google Analytics. You can follow your user flow and it's fascinating to see where people fall off. You had 100 people land on your website this week and only 20 made it to another page. The rest bounced. You've got an 80% bounce rate. That's not good. Uh, but maybe it's a 96% click through rate to something else. And you can see that they're really bouncing by page four. Well, maybe you're losing them there. But if we're not, we're getting them to page four and they've taken the action we want them to take. Amazing. I hope you're starting to see why less is more because we need to get them to the finish line. And I used to think that more was more. I even had it written on my computer as a screensaver at one point, more is more, just everything, everything all at once. And uh, when it comes to websites, I can tell you that is not true. And we look no further than Amazon to see that one click checkout is there for a reason. And when this was first initiated a decade ago, people didn't trust it and there's many quite hilarious case studies now about how Amazon had to go back and create speed bumps along the way so that people felt a little bit more like it was legit when they got to check out so quickly. But now if we wanna get somewhere, get me there fast and don't waste my time having to dig, dig, dig really, really deep. So if you haven't already, and I would encourage you if you have an existing site to go and look at this and, and just even think about things like, you know, ease of use, intuitiveness and page titles, but mapping out what the purpose of each of those pages is and whether you're hitting the mark. What is the intended goal or action on each of those pages? And hopefully there's not three or four, there's one or two that they're either gonna click through or they're gonna fill out a form or they're gonna pick up the phone or purchase. Um, and you may have way more than five pages, that's totally fine. Uh, but just thinking about it from a very rudimentary site map, and then voila, you are now wireframing your website. When we look at our, um, or if we go into the website launch lab course, this is where we actually really start to draw out um, the pages page by page with those elements that I showed you last week, sort of as I was showing you my notebook where I always draw every single page before I build a website. Um, but we're not gonna go too deep into that today. What you need to think about, however, is just what it is people are seeing and how they navigate. Oh, here it is, sorry, I knew that I had included this. So what will they get on each page? This is what a wireframe would look like. And this is what we do with the five to 10 pages uh, on our main parts of our website in the website launch lab. And it really doesn't have to be complicated, but as soon as you know what an element is, as in a header banner or a hero banner, and then, you know, thumbnails or offerings shortcuts, or maybe it's a testimonial or proof point, a quote somewhere down there. So it's just a quote block or a text block. Then maybe you've got those logos or icons that serve as proof, social proof or, or people that you've worked with. And then of course your footer. So this is a very basic wireframe, um, but you can Google, Google image search website wireframe and you'll start to see what we mean. And the more homework we do and the more pencil to paper that we do before we go in and we start building and every one of these sections has a purpose or a click through to somewhere else, then the easier it is to build. It's like butter. It just, that Lego project comes together because you're not wondering what pages for what and where it all goes. 
Um, Lindsay is asking, I'm wondering if these slides are also available as a file. The workbook is great. Um, if you have, I can't post the slides to that Mighty Network. They're just too big, but I can pull a few from it. If there's um, any in particular that you want, Lindsay, let me think about that. I might be able to post it, but certainly the replay will be in um, the social club and you can, you can revisit this if that's okay. Regarding the sitemap, where do you place a landing page that's a part of a funnel? Good question. Is it hidden on navigation or is it visible on the sitemap headings? Oh man, you totally just called me out on something. I love it. So when I talked about the water pipes and the connectivity of a site, where there's an exception to the rule is in landing pages. Because we'll look at some, but you'll see that landing pages serve one goal. So I'm Tony Robbins and I'm launching a new ebook. And that ebook is going to lead people on a journey after they subscribe to my Vegas, whatever, life changing three day event for $10,000. But the ebook starts as a lead magnet or some kind of lead generation tool. And I don't want them at all distracted by my nav, or my logo, my contact buttons. I don't even want a footer on that thing. I just want a landing page with a form that says download my ebook and I'm going to capture their email address. Well, that's not connected to my name, main nav. So we can have several of these pieces out there um, that are, you know, either we can, we can choose to have Google unfollow them. So that's one way to do it. Or we just, you know, take our chances and, and don't connect it to our main nav. And we know that it's, we don't have 200 of them to make Google think that we're doing some black hat tactics like publishing, you know, bunk blog posts with a million keywords jammed into them that say, you know, Physio, physiotherapy, physiotherapy skills. Like this is what people do when they're publishing things that aren't connected to their nav. They don't want these articles found or these pages found, but they want to jam them full of searchable keywords to make Google, you know, so that's where we have to be a little careful. I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry if that was a way too quick explanation. <laughs> so wireframing my page elements, this is what it kind of looks like when we go page by page. What is the title of that page? What's the forward slash URL or the, the page slug um, and or extension? And what does it look like for you? So I really like to, you know, map this out on whiteboards or like I said, big, big notebooks as I'm building something. Okay. Yes, that's right, Lindsay. So let's keep going. Site assets. That was a big chunk there. We're getting somewhere, you guys. There's only two more parts of this. So, so important, of course, is the content on our sites. And we need the right kind of imagery, copy, and video if we have it. We know video sells. So if you're in the market to sell something or take someone through something more clearly, by all means, embed a video on your website. You're not uploading that video to the website because that's probably a 300 megabyte file and it's gonna slow the heck out of your website. And that is a ranking factor. A site that loads slowly because it has massive files on it is bad in Google's books because it's a bad experience for the people they're sending there. So of course we would embed a Vimeo link or a YouTube link that you've hosted out elsewhere. Long form content inclusions like blogs, so important as assets. You don't have to have these ready to go right away um, if you need some blog support, we've got a blogging course that basically states if you can blog 12 times in a year about your expertise, dictate it into your phone if you need to, but come up with 12 topics that you're commonly asked, that you could talk about for days, that can dispel some myths or whatever it is that you can do to build your trust and expertise and get found on the internet, your website will get seen and ranked so much faster than if you don't have any of that long form content. You can be around for a long time, like Harry, refinishing clawfoot tubs and other, you know, large iron items for decades. And if you just have a homepage and a contact page, and it's not optimized in Google's eyes with the right kind of keywords or richer, longer form content, even five well-traveled or well-read blogs on your site that you're pointing people to year after year, because you don't need to update them. The technology hasn't changed. You're still finishing with the same paint and the same technique. Um, amazing, because now those keywords are in there and Google can find them and, and it knows that you're relevant. So this is where I, I highly encourage you to find a way to create copy within the site once you've got it live and continue to add to it over the years. And as I mentioned, reverse engineering. Why? So that we don't go gather 200 images and 7,000 word essays. We do less is more. And I like to do this in a spreadsheet sometimes so that I max out and I know that every page only has a headline 
and a tagline or a byline and a bit of site copy and not too, too much. So less is more. Speak their language, not yours. Brevity is difficult, but it is absolutely necessary. And if we can work backwards and draw it out, we're gonna be in really good shape when it goes to pull those assets into the site template that we've chosen and the site navigation and map that we've kind of drawn out for ourselves. Great content um, is again, quality over quantity, but if we can show it, don't say it. There was a time in case anyone is gonna ask or wondering this, where our sites, a lot of them were built on something called Adobe Flash. And that was where there was, you know, Adobe was powering a lot of websites or even just certain parts of websites where you'd see those sliders that would come across with lots of imagery. And what was happening is that sites, Google, sorry, search, in, search engines couldn't rank or crawl those sites because they were just images. So we know that we need to have a blend of both but we also know how powerful imagery and video can be to get people to quickly understand what it is you're doing and probably get them to the finish line quicker. So just a couple of you know, highlights here of some sites that are you know, hitting the mark on a number of different um, aspects. Product-led minimalism. This shoe company out of the UK is still naming their products accordingly. They're still using all the right keywords even if they only need to say Chelsea boots on their homepage um, four, four or five times, they're going to rank for Chelsea boots. They don't need to have, you know, 700 words accompanying it. And it really hits the mark because it's exactly what I want to see if I'm going to continue uh, into the site. Information meets interaction. So there's not a ton of, you know, flashing elements or pop-ups or whatnot, but there's enough here that when I scroll over this very cool coffee company, I can, I can hover and see a price or I can hover and see just what I wanted. And then again, calls to action and buttons in the right place that lead me, lead me in and want more, wanting more. Associations and nonprofits, we can have a, a tough time sometimes finding examples of these that aren't too much or that are compelling enough for a stranger to choose to join or invest with or donate to. And this is where I love this example of the teachers guild. Right away, you just see smiling teachers. And, and sometimes it's as simple as, you know, breaking the mold and showing, showcasing the positive. Another example of this for a not-for-profit that does this solo is charity water. They're one of my favorite social feeds and just favorite examples of a charitable organization that only showcases joy. And we're talking about building water wells in like some of the poorest regions of the world. And they go in and they find the most joyful photos of the people that they're serving and they're showing the end result. So it's really satisfying as a donor or a user or a follower to see the joy that you're bringing. And of course it's working for them and people don't want to donate more. A user experience on this, uh, uh, I think it's Swedish website. It's just really neat. If you were to go, actually, I didn't even include the link. I'm sorry, but basically, it's gamified, and you can hover around it and uh, and and go into the rainforest and see these tribal villages and see where there's been deforestation. And again, it's an it's a uh, charity, but it's got a really neat way to interact with it. And and sometimes we need to go beyond Squarespace and Shopify if we know we have the funds and the need for a site that has more interaction to it. Um, maybe it's just an interactive map even sometimes, and that can either be placed in as a, as a plugin or a widget if we're using WordPress that can allow that, or it's just something that we find um, you know, as a feature that we can incorporate on our, our Shopify site. And then really strong calls to action. Um, great homepage for Spotify, free, free music, millions of songs, need I say more, and then a little bit more. And those are all objections that they are, you know, removing. Is your music free? Yes, free music. Do you have lots of music? Yes, millions of songs. Well, can I play it on it? Yes, play it on every device. And then get Spotify for free. So, so simple. Less is more. They've said it all. <laughs> That's why musicians are broke. There you go. You're right. Millions of songs for free. Okay, I won't go there, but um, thank you, JD. You're right. Simple, clear, concise copy. We've talked about this a lot. I'm just gonna hit it home one more time. Um, say it in a way that makes sense to your users and is exactly the language that they would use, not that you and your CEO would use. So when we look at our assets, when we get, get our assets in order, we have all of these, these things happening. And in our website, Launch Lab, this happens in week number two of four. 
we're gathering our assets as we go, but we don't start plunking them onto the page until the start of week three of four, because we need to make sure that again, that's the final almost piece of the puzzle. And the framework is built in the right way that we know exactly what photos go in there and what imagery or, or carousel or videos going there and why. But the more that you can have gathered and pulled in advanced and properly named and you know alt image tagged with your keywords, um, the better. And I encourage you to start there. For many of us, COVID was spent doing a lot of kind of reorganizing of our photos and our copy and our messaging. And sometimes that's the cleaning of house that you need to do before you, before you start. So exercise number four, if you were given one page and five assets to promote your wares or to sell your skills, um, what would be on there? And this is like survival of, well, survivor uh, website edition. One image, describe what that image might be. Is it stock? Is it a flat lay of tech tools or is it actual people smiling? Um, is it you know something that you have in your fold or something you need to go find and source? Is it revolving because you're a seasonal restaurant and of course you wanna showcase seasonal food and you need to shoot that every quarter. I mean, I'm going deeper here, but you get the picture. What is your one headline? That's that thing that just like leads us in. And then do you need a sub headline under that? And then what's that call to action? There's a brilliant homepage. <laughs> it's written well. And then where are they going from there? What is our next step if we got a second page in Survivor Website Edition? So the priorities in order of where you would ideally want that user journey to go. Where should they head next? Is it the about page? Well, hopefully not. Hopefully they're so compelled by your services that they can't wait to read about it, find out the price and buy. And then maybe even after they're gonna go see who you are. Or maybe it's not that, that way. You want them right, to know, what, right away to know how trusted and expert, expert you are and uh, they're gonna head to your about page. Anyone has any questions on that guy? Again, I wish we could, you know, now go pause and put on our headphones and come back and do this. But I, if you don't mind, I'm going to keep going. And then the next piece, the next exercise is the four to eight word headline. So a little bit deeper now. And this is where I have to say my time spent in the newsroom at a tabloid newspaper, followed by a, a big broadsheet, which was interesting. Tabloid, Calgary Sun. I was in there for three years and every day things got tighter and tighter and tighter. And it was an art. It was something that I learned over time, what could be cut and snipped and how to make it even, you know, just more punchy in less words. And I love driving by the Calgary Sun news boxes because I can still see Marty Hudson, the managing editor's expertise come to light on the front page every day. In two words, he can sum up an entire political issue or scandal. It's so awesome. And we don't need to be that tight, but we do need to practice this. And if you need to spend some time trolling news sites, your favorite blogs, sometimes like magazines like Vogue or Entrepreneur or Inc. Magazine, where you're reading the articles, but they're in a, vert or a digital format. And you'll see the, the tactics they take. How long are those headlines? Which are the ones that stop you in your tracks? And this matters so much for the reasons we're talking about, for website compellingness but also for our social posts. We want to be able to pull headlines and sound bites off of our website and create a blog out of it or create a social post or an Instagram live or whatever it is, because you're that good at writing. And they're not all just how to's or five things, but maybe they are because you know that that really works for your people and that you can create those listicles all day long. But anything that is, you know, written in a way that's kind of following the rules of journalism uh, you'll, will get you really far. And we have social proof headlines or we have fear or threat headlines. Um, you know, the five reasons that, um, or do this one thing and you'll have happy, healthy kids for the rest of your days. What is it? Some of those can be misleading and other times they're really good. So I would encourage you to work on your headline writing and this doesn't just work for blog headlines and social, but of course our site copy. Dale, see you later. We'll talk on Friday, my friend. Thanks for coming. Okay, you guys, search factors. So let's just look a little bit here. Again, this isn't a big SEO class, but we're gonna talk about some of the things that really matter when it comes to rethinking or building from scratch with our websites. Site speed, mobile friendliness, and then dwell time. 
how long are people sticking around on your site? And I don't just mean click throughs, how many pages are they seeing? Well, they could see eight pages, but if they're there for six seconds on your entire site, then that's not a very successful, you know, um, sitting. So we want to make sure that they're staying around for a while and they're diving deeper in and consuming more and more articles like I did with the storage company. I only needed eight minutes, but I managed to read the exact four articles that I needed to answer all my questions and phone them up and give them my credit card. Um, so looking at these pieces here, mobile friendliness. The question is just how friendly are you to your ever increasing number of mobile users? And I would encourage you again, as I always try to, to get your own Google Analytics set up and just take a peek. So if I look at you know, Q1 of 2021 and I can see just how many, what our split was of mobile versus desktop versus the same time frame last year, I see it every year moving more and more mobile based. And yours is likely the same. Not many people are heading backwards and now just spending more time on desktop. So being really conscious of that. And then of course it goes without saying, how does your site render on mobile? And it does it at all. And if it doesn't, we really need to think about it. And if nothing else, that's the reason for less is more. Because when I'm reading it on a tiny phone, forget it. I don't want to be you know, reading 5,000 words when I could have read 50. So this is where we can do a test with Google. Um, just even Google, Google uh, mobile friendly, test and you'll be brought to their their search tools and you can just enter your url and see how you score so testing yourself i thought that i could get away with testing someone that we didn't really love like canada revenue agency but it turns out their page is really mobile friendly <laughs> and then i tried the toronto maple leafs and their page is also mobile friendly i was trying to find one that wasn't but the nice thing about it is that they'll give you tips so once you're told what your test result is um, you'll be able to see where you can make improvements. And ideally I can click through to my Google search console. So the very first tip here um, at the top where it said test results, page loading issues, and I clicked view details. Well, that bumped me over to my Google search console because I had it set up. And then I can see all my properties there in Google search console. And what search console is, is unlike analytics, which is gonna show site behaviors um, of what your users are doing acquisition, where they're coming from, um, overarching uh, pieces of your website and how, how it's uh, being found. Google Search Console is gonna show you how your site is technically functioning. Do you have broken links? Do you have lots of you know, inbound and outbound links that are doing wonders for your search? Um, you know, where can you better optimize imagery or other things on your site so that it loads quicker, et cetera? So it's really, really helpful. Um, I did find one of someone that we don't know, and it's the irishrexonline.net. And I wasn't too surprised to see that it was not mobile friendly. So if you get a result like that, you probably already know that you've got some issues and you know why, because no one can read that on their mobile device. Okay, load speed. Um, this is another question. How long do you expect me to stare at my screen waiting for your site to load? And especially if my Wi-Fi is kind of bad, which it is, then that's going to be doubled, like even worse. So taking into consideration, you got to start off with as fast of a site as you possibly can. And the more heavy elements you have that your whole page has to load up before that page will show itself because you have sliders and carousels and imagery and, and widgets and plugins and calendar booking tools, those all matter. Even that little chat bot that I'm encouraging you to use, that takes time to load because it's a script. It's a third party script from Facebook Messenger or Help Scout that is having to load when that page renders and it takes time. So hopefully you're not in the you know, six to 12 second load speed. I've had sites that have taken like 46 seconds to load WordPress. And it's when I've been like, that's it. Like we're, we're breaking this and starting over because, you know, it's just not functional. And the worst thing about that is if you're running ads against your site. So there's nothing more painful than seeing that you're paying 50 cents a click or 250 a click to get people to your site on Google ads or Instagram ads for only half of them to actually stick around for that site to load. Well, now you're paying double that because only half of them actually followed it, but you're, you know, paying for the click. So we can ask Google directly if our page is fast on all devices. There's another test here. Again, you can just Google Google site speed test and you'll be brought right here. Um, in this case, I used our friends at the uh, uh, RBC Convention Center in Winnipeg where we had our conference a couple years ago. 
And um, I just needed an example of a slow mobile speed and a slow desktop speed. You're gonna see both. And 43 is not the end of the world. Don't worry, it's not like most of us are scoring in the 90s. But if you see that you're at six, you've got some problems. And again, you're going to get some really great advice as to why that is. And if you don't understand it, you can Google it, or you can ask your developer. But if we're starting off with properly optimized images, so max 250 kilobytes, not a megabyte per, and they're 72 DPI, so they're web ready files. You can edit your photos in Photoshop, but also even just in preview um, or Google image or JPEG shrink, and you'll find one that'll compress that image and you get it down to where it should be without it being pixelated. Um, you can really make a dent on your, mo your load speed and uh, your SEO as a result. So exercise six of seven, a website audit, you guys. Thinking about if you can figure out your mobile friendly score and your website speed test. This is also fantastic you know, proof if you need the budget to redo your website, you need to talk to your team. Um, and then again, the clarity testing what you do, who you are, and what to do next. Just can't hit that home enough. So really clear of those people that you're going to ask, including some strangers, to look at your site and see if they know what's happening there. You can look at your analytics too, but it's much better if you can get a human telling you their feedback. Integrations and automations. So I told you that we we're going to talk about some of those final pieces that make a website sing. This is week four in our website launch lab. And it's, you know, a lot of the connecting of our domain and whatnot as well. But for most of us, we want to capture something again when they're there. And if they're not buying directly on your site, well, you better be taking home their pixel that you can retarget them with an ad or their email address that you can send them an e-newsletter. Otherwise, you've spent so much time and energy getting them here probably from other efforts too on social media or ads and you've got to capture them somehow or get them to convert in the way that you hope they will that your goals are met because so are theirs so let's look at some of these um these options the right integrations first of all when used wisely they can be our website's most powerful ally for the reasons i mentioned and it's the technology and tools that get your visitor or their prospect or customer to a human faster and you to them, primarily. I mean, unless we're talking about an e-newsletter sign up, then that of course is not trying to get to a human, but maybe they wanna hear from you and they wanna know what you have to say in your e-newsletter quickly, not six months from now. But for the most part, we're talking about, you know, live support, FAQs, chatbots. So you'll see that a lot of the companies that we're gonna look at, as I mentioned, have these now. Um, some are chat bots and they are pre-programmed questions, which I think a lot of us could agree is not our favorite. Um, what we have on our site is something called Help Scout. Um, and I love it because it's really just a shortened version or a more direct version of our contact page. You can go to the contact page and fill out that form, or you can just click that button, fill it out there. And it, it says, we are not live, but we will send you know, the right person to you as fast as we can. And people like that better than having to hunt around for an email address, a 1-800 number, or a contact form. It's on every page. Facebook Messenger is another fantastic one. You can embed the Facebook Messenger script onto your website. We talk about this in our Facebook 360 series course. So you set up your Facebook Messenger um, uh, live chat in Facebook Business Manager. You can create a greeting or you can create a series of questions that they can you know, have auto answered if you're finding that a lot of people just wanna know your hours or they just wanna know if you're open on Mother's Day. And, or you can just have it be totally unpopulated with automated questions and just let them get in touch with you. And then you can reply to them from Facebook Messenger, which is really nice, especially if you're already in Facebook Messenger, answering people's questions there that are coming at you from Facebook. It kind of serves two purposes that way as a messenger and chat. Pop-up and list building tools. So lots of ways that we can capture email addresses. Um, my favorite in here is Flowdesk. It's just a really affordable email marketing tool that is $19 a month. Um, and you're not penalized for growing your list past 500 or 5,000. It stays the same. It's got gorgeous templates and really nice, easily embeddable forms that you can stick on the middle of your page or in the footer to capture email addresses throughout your site, ideally. And then of course, others that are more dedicated to landing pages like 
um, Kajabi, for example, or Squarespace or lead pages or ClickFunnels. So if you look at the one in the top right, it's a little bit ugly, but that was actually GYOB last year. Um, so I built that in Kajabi um, and it was, again, no nav, no logo, no distractions, just a landing page that then led people to exactly what they needed to do, which is register, one goal. And then of course it triggers any newsletter sequence that welcomes them in and tells them where to go and all the things you guys are experiencing. So Kajabi has lots of built-in templates. It's why I love it so much. It's not just a landing page builder, it's a website builder. You can build these landing pages for specific campaigns on the side, which are obviously really helpful if you've got that ebook or webinar or workshop or new product to announce or launch. Um, one thing I, I would say is avoid sending people back to social if you can. You've managed to get them to your site. You've got to find a way to keep them there um, if you can. That dwell time is important for Google ranking factors, but also because it gets them doing what you want them to do. So try not to have, you don't see it too often anymore, but in the you know websites of old, even six, eight years ago, we saw a lot of sidebars, Twitter live streams, or even the Instagram um, you know, stream at the bottom of your site. What I do is I pull in our Instagram images as a carousel and yes, you can click that and go to Instagram, but it's not live streaming you Instagram in like in real time in a way that's going to send someone back there to social media. No, thank you. I'd be crazy to do that and to encourage them to go bounce off to social and never come back. So really using those types of things carefully. So this is it. This is where hopefully you can start to narrow in on your needs and priorities. And if you are thinking of, you know, starting on a new platform, this might help you determine how important, for example, e-commerce is and online sales and whether Shopify is your best bet, if, if the answer is yes. Um, if not, I would highly encourage you to look at, at uh, Squarespace, as we'll see in a minute here, because it's got so much, um, you know, design and function married together without having uh, the store as the forefront. And it still has e-commerce, but it's just not, you know, the end all be all part, part of your website. Um, are you taking orders for delivery? Well, you might need a third party tool for that. Like some of our restaurant friends that have to, you know, rely on not just a DoorDash widget, but sometimes a reservation booking system that they can embed into the site. Or like my husband, who's constantly taking appointments with people who want quotes for their basement renovation, he's got Acuity in his Squarespace site. Uh, it's a calendar booking tool and he's got that embedded in. We have different appointment types. They can book a 15 minute phone call. They can book an hour long consult or whatever it is. And it's just so automated and he gets the notification. So thinking about what integrations you might need, what automations as well that can help you out. And, uh, and of course we can find the right ones for you from there. Oh, that's supposed to say number four, I think, but I've lost track. Okay, so let's look at, um, oh, here, quick question from JD. Um, with pop-ups, I think that's Jackie. I just don't want to assume, but I'm pretty sure. Um, with pop-ups, have you noticed a lot of difference with the being in the middle of the screen versus on the side? Such a great question. So one thing that you will read in you know seo blogs is how bad pop-ups are for seo and it's true google does not like pop-ups because in general people don't like pop-ups however what i've come to learn over the years and i will stand by this all day long is that without a pop-up or a reason to subscribe so there's some kind of velvet rope offer pop-up where you get 10 percent off if you subscribe to joe fresh's e-newsletter or you get an ebook to download or the latest you know, cocktail recipes from Martha Stewart if you join her mailing list. Um, you're not going to add to your mailing list. When we didn't have pop-ups in play on ours and that can be either an exit pop-up that the mouse, <laughs> the, the integration is smart enough that when you go to hover on that X to exit the page, that pop-up appears. That's called an exit pop-up, it's brilliant. Or appear on scroll. So when I am two thirds of the way down the page, I've said, yes, that pop-up can appear. And it also is a smart pop-up that's connected to my list. And it knows if someone's already on that list. So it's not going to appear to people that aren't. If you need some examples of this, sumo.com creates really smart pop-ups like this that can help you build your list in the smartest way possible. Um, and you know, other ones as well, like, like on, on the sidebar or in the bottom right corner that might pop up again on scroll or on exit or, or halfway through the page or whatever. 
30 seconds on the page. Um, so I would wholeheartedly encourage you to consider it. The difference to me is this. Yes, I might hinder my search ranking a little bit because I have a pop-up and Google knows that and it can see the script tracking script on my website. However, I am going to long tail this and by having no pop-up, I'm getting five emails a week. By having a pop-up, I'm literally getting 400 emails a week because people want that ebook and they join my list and my list is my most powerful marketing tool and conversion revenue generating feature of my entire business. So great, now what's happening is I'm sending that e-newsletter to so many more people, I'm driving more traffic back to my website. As a result, I'm ranking higher and the whole thing is negated. Any of my fears of Google seeing that I have a pop-up are absolutely um, you know, outweighed by the back-end results of having more traffic to my site because of the list being built. And if anyone disagrees with that, by all means. And you guys, they don't have to annoy Remember, think of a pop-up that you don't mind or an, an offer, let's call it, that comes with an e-newsletter subscription. A lot of us will subscribe to that Joe Fresh email just to get the 10% off and then we'll unsubscribe, which isn't ideal. Um, you know, we can be smarter with, than that with our own offers because our website, our e-newsletter content so good, they don't want to unsubscribe. But, um, you know, how is it that you can, you can integrate it into your own sites in ways that you haven't minded being targeted yourself? Okay, so we looked at Squarespace last week. Awesome. Um, and we talked about, you know, its pros and some of its cons. It's beautiful. It's come a long way. It's a closed source um, CMS, and it means that it's very secure. You can purchase your domain from Squarespace as well as your website, and that includes template and hosting. Um, you can upgrade if you want e-commerce, if you want more pages, if you want the marketing tools, because they now have email marketing. Um, so lots of ways to grow with it and it's still relatively affordable. Even if you had the biggest Mac daddy program ever with Squarespace, you'd be spending like $500 a year. And for your number one marketing tool, that's pretty, you know, reasonable. So a few examples here of what I'm going to call some of the best in class, and you can search these yourselves too. There's no shortage of, you know, lists of, of fantastic, um, uh, Squarespace websites out there. So, and if you are going to, of course, um, you know, build on Squarespace or explore it, just dive in and start to look at the templates sooner than later. And you can start to, you know, get some help from them and, and see what it is that you might be uh, in the market for, but lots of great stuff that you might absolutely resonate with right away. So I'm just gonna look through a couple of these. If there's any questions on any, let me know, but Yellow Company, a community of women creating meaningful work. So we've got a very clean website, lots of white space, which Squarespace is known for. It's like those clean portfolio based sites. This girl has embedded a video on her homepage. It's loading a little slowly Yellow just because was of my, um, you know, many feet, many windows open. Um, but that is either hosted on probably a Vimeo, I'm guessing, because she can customize her player color and she's gotten rid of all the other junk. So it's so clean and nice. So that would be a video embed widget or element text elements, um, you know, pages. This here we can see is a graphic that she maybe created in Canva um, because that can't really do. She's probably only got three types of text she can have on her page, but she can go create the exact or whatever kind of graphic or illustration she wants elsewhere quite simply. This too, I can see that would be some kind of illustration or image that she's loaded up. Um, ditto for these little GIFs that she might've created in Canva with some, you know, animation to them, which is really nice. So um, if we were to wireframe this, I know we could do it. You know, she's got her different sections, blog at the bottom, probably with oh, one more kind of proof point here, a bit more imagery, calls to action, and then a really simple footer. Really, really nice and clean, very Squarespace. This one, Studio McGee, I found this morning and then I realized I recognize this girl. I watch her HGTV show, <laughs> um, but it's beautiful. This looks like it's a custom WordPress site. It's, she knows her brand. She's got her fonts nailed and her, just her general kind of look and feel is, is very beautiful. And you know, her, I bet her social feeds look the exact same. Um, some really nice kind of carousel options here. She's probably pushing us over here to her, you know, uh, cut her shop or um, maybe her Amazon page. Um, but you get the idea. With Squarespace now, we can do really cool things like block overlays and some things that used to just be reserved for WordPress or something highly customizable. 
So um, yeah, just lots of really nice options here. Beautiful template that she's chosen. Um, a tech company. So I don't really know what they do. I guess I could figure it out. A micro conference fund or micro conf. I don't know what that is, but either way, <laughs> you can see here, they've got a pop-up and you can't quite see it, but it says at the bottom of it, powered by right message. So through your travels, take note of these take note whether they're prompting you to, you know, with an, with a, a pre-written question or it's a chat or it's just a form field. Um, and then some of these elements as well, think to yourself, oh yeah, I know that that's a testimonial block, you know, three columns across. This is a proof point kind of icons. Do these go anywhere? Maybe um, calls to action and a linear footer. Really nice, and again, Squarespace here. Um, very cool button with a video background. That's awesome. They've dropped in, um, it looks like this is a one image background that has the key on it, which is kind of cool. Um, imagery on the left, text on the right, very simple blocks. We can see a little bit of parallel or parallax scrolling going on as I scroll. So Squarespace has come a long, long way. Who was the first one? Um, Teresa's asking me that was called yellowco.co. Uh, let me just raise this up so you guys can see the URLs here. There you go. Oh, now I can't see them. Hang on. We'll have to compromise. Uh, okay, so the next one is uh, architecture information. I wanted to show you this one. This is, I think, a company out of New York, but they're using an entire gallery background, so full width. Um, full screen gallery that's going to auto scroll every three to four seconds and just right away I don't have to do a thing and they are like portfolioing the crap out of themselves in a nice way. Very simple nav for uh, main links or pages and then they've decided to put their social up here so that's okay if they feel that they don't need to bury their social and they're not worried about letting people bounce off there because they know they'll come back no problem. They are using that secondary drop down. So we haven't seen what this looks like on mobile, but I would be curious. It probably goes into a bit of a hamburger menu of just lines, um, hopefully. And then of course I can dive deeper into this. Luckily we don't see any tertiary menus here, but in some cases we will. In fact, um, God, you guys are gonna think I just adore this man, Tony Robbins, and I don't really, but um, I'm gonna try and get to a site because he is using uh, a lot of uh, drop downs last time I looked. So don't let me totally scare you off. If your organization finds it better to have drop downs because then you can order all the things that you've got. Um, in some cases, I feel like he's had tertiary drop downs. I'm not gonna go too deep into it now, but either way. Oh, look at that tagline. Gosh, he always changes them up too. Very, very empowering. Can the social be a pop-up versus a navigate away thing? Um, I think what you mean, Lindsay, is could the social, could you be encouraging people on a pop-up to go follow you over there? I don't know, I've never seen that before. You probably could do that because you can customize your pop-ups to go wherever you want them to go. It doesn't always have to be to populate a list. It could be to download an ebook or follow a link. So yeah, you could probably put images in of your Instagram and say, join us on Insta. That's maybe a really neat idea to, capture their business card on the way out the door. Go see you on, see you online or let's get social or let's be friends or something. Okay, this Arch motorcycle is a final Squarespace example um, where, you know, lots of text, but obviously it's working for them, hopefully. Um, and just again, wanted to show you, it reads like a magazine. It's really nice looking. It's got some drop downs and uh, you can actually buy through this site. So don't be fooled into thinking that you can only buy on a Shopify site. Case in point, um, this is a Squarespace site I built a couple years ago that the team has since um, adjusted, but uh, they are taking us right into their course that they're selling. And if we go to their homepage, this is where I was using the examples of encouraging nurses to promote themselves. You're sick of your career with AHS, come do this training and you can work in a medical aesthetics clinic, um, upgrade your skills, etc. cetera. Uh, really speaking their language ideally. So this is a site where yes, you can absolutely buy. And then if I just pull yes, this here, from it, you'll see that what they're oh, using. Yeah. Okay, let's just go through this quickly. What they're using for their pop-up is a Facebook Messenger um, sort of block. So again, really easy way to get that going for yourself if you don't wanna have a third party. And that's free. Facebook Messenger is Messenger tools, free versus you know the opposite. 
Okay, so just talked about some Squarespace stuff. Um, if you have any questions on any of those or you want to talk more about Squarespace, I'm around anytime, especially if you're still, if you want to do our website launch lab and you're unsure which platform to build on. So we looked at Shopify last week. Um, oh, I'm just going to finish answering Lindsay's question. With this, can a social be a pop-up versus a navigate away thing? I mean, as a click onto the social button, it doesn't take you out, but the website is still there behind it. I.e. you're still hanging in the background when they sober up from the social drunkenness. Um, it's probably going to open in a new window. So the best practice, if it's an internal link that leads someone through to another page on your site, you don't want it to open in a new window. I see I'm frozen. I hope you guys can still hear me. Um, but if it's an external link, you want it to open in a new window so that yes, st you're still hanging out on their browser as a tab that is you know, not closed. If anyone, if, if, if I'm frozen, you guys just let me know and I'll stop, stop talking. Um, okay, moving right along. So next, Shopify, let's look at some examples. Oh, good. Natalie can still hear me. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Um, okay, so when we think about Shopify, of course, what we've got is, you know, no shortage of, um, let me just get out of here. I need to close some windows. We've got no shortage of incredible templates now, which is really exciting because we just simply haven't had those in the past. And then it's made Shopify a harder sell. Like I just haven't enjoyed, um, you know, what it is that they look like in the end, even if they have fantastic e-commerce opportunities. But now we've got a whole store of free templates. And then you can also find paid templates in the Shopify store or elsewhere. You can just Google Shopify templates for purchase. Um, and for $99, $299, you're able to find something that might really sing to you versus just the out of the box free Squarespace templates. But I would encourage you to look at those first because they're actually really not bad. Okay, so a couple examples here. This one, Partake Foods. So um, it kind of looks like Squarespace. Uh, Shopify site is a, a dead ringer. A, the telltale sign is this shopping cart. They often have, you know, people haven't customized this and you can just see that, oh, there's my profile button and there's my shopping cart. This is not Squarespace. Um, these guys, if I pull this up, are using as well, uh, sort of a help bot or some kind of chat right here. And interesting, it's giving us the opportunity to just change things. That's different. I've never seen that before. It's an accessibility site. That's kind of neat. Although I'm not sure if that's as important as chat, but who knows? Obviously they think so. Um, kind of cool. This is called a mega menu. So when you see a drop down that's got imagery or like lots of good stuff, um, it's if you can put that in there, that's great. So this is a template in, in Shopify that allows for that. You just load up your image and Ideally, you don't have white, white background, you've created a transparent PNG in Canva. You remove the background so that it doesn't look like a white square with a colored background or you get the idea. We're trying to make it look as pro as we can here. So if I click out of there, then I'm no longer seeing that mega menu, but this is a really nice way to do a secondary nav, as you can tell. Um, very cool, I'm in. So I've got categories of posts here or products actually. So when I create my Squarespace site, it's my Shopify site, I'm going to pick my template week one. I'm going to frame my website week two, draw it all out, gather my assets. And then in week three, I'm gonna start creating my products. And if I have three to five categories of products, I can create these little category shortcuts, which are awesome. Because again, it just starts to really filter people right off the bat and not overwhelm and get them to their goal quicker. Um, nice little kind of proof points here. Um, and then a little bit more, they know what their, their users or their prospects are asking as they go through the page. And they absolutely answer those questions as they go. Um, now we're getting to know them a little more, you know, find a store, uh, quotes appearing as a nice scrolling testimonial gallery. That's awesome. A little bit more about who's behind this and the promise she's making. I'm just falling for her as I go, if this is my jam. Um, some giveaways. This is kind of like an Instagram scrolling menu that I mentioned, but it's not like totally distracting and, and you know, I can go there if I need to, but it's not just so Instagram uh, branded. 
Dale is asking, do I review sites for people? As in when I'm ready to go, would you review and critique? I would do absolutely that if you're part of our website launch lab, Dale, come on in my friend. I'm just joking. Of course, I would be happy to look at your site, but that is exactly what we do in the lab. Um, okay, Manitoba Mucklucks, love this company. Just another example of a really nice um, site within uh, Shopify. You can choose countries if you wanna charge in different currencies, just dead easy e-commerce tools. Like they're killing it for a reason, as I mentioned, just how well they're doing as a Canadian brand, but also um, how far they've come. So there's some beautiful templates for you to choose from. Um, package free shop, I thought this was another really nice one. If we can get it to load. Um, so we've got a graphic that they've used as their background and then the text here. Oh, it looks like that's actually not text. That's too bad. So with that graphic, they have embedded that text on top of it. And then the button uh, probably is done in their, their one of their fonts. But the idea is that we want to make it so that the text is, in, is added to the site on top of our imagery. It's not embedded on the imagery so Google can't see it. You know, it's not a picture of a text, it's actual text. Um, right off the bat, they've got some of their featured products here in a little gallery. Really cool that with your product imagery, you can make a GIF. You can do that in, in Jiffy or Canva very easily. If you had five photos or still imagery of your toothpaste roller, and now it's got some motion to it. If you feel overwhelmed, you just need five products or 10 products, but you need to have great photography with them. Just showing you some of these different sections here, but you get the idea. If you had everything ready to go, your product um, copy and your imagery, honest to God, you could build this site in a day. It's just plugging it in to all the places that it's encouraging you to plug it into and the template is pre-built. So it just says, put this here, put this there. It's really nice. Another one, this is called Florist with a drop down. Pretty, pretty basic, freshly milled flour and premium dry goods. Just love the look of it. I've seen this template before. They didn't do a whole lot of customizing, but it doesn't even matter. By dropping in their own copy and imagery, they've got a gorgeous site and they're selling online. Bob's your uncle. Shop Pay is the built-in um, payment gateway on Shopify sites, which is so nice as a user. You guys have probably purchased something from a Shopify site by now and it saves your information and it's just like one click checkout. It's really great. No problem if you have to sign off, you guys. I'm just basically showing um, various uh, case studies here. This is really cool. They've found an illustration that works for them. And this is probably done as part of their brand package or their, you know, their brand look and feel. Um, but illustrations go a really long way. And you can find icons and illustrations in, you know, Shutterstock or sometimes Pexels, the free stock photo site will have them. But they just kind of mix it up a little bit. And if it if it works for your brand, great. Here's an example of an embedded e-newsletter block. So you don't have to find it on the bottom of the page or through a pop-up right there. And even better if you're saying what you're going to get for that. Special offers and recipes delivered. Awesome. And again, oh, these ones are linking right to Instagram, which is kind of cool. But maybe I don't even need to go there because I'm just wanting to see a few photos. Another thing we'll see with, with Shopify sites at the bottom here. Um, all the different ways you can pay. And then powered by Shopify, they haven't removed that, which is also just fine. Uh, last Shopify I'll show you. Thanks, Maureen, good to see you. Um, Herschel, so huge Canadian company, like massive, right? And, um, and we've seen them uh, really kind of, I don't know, succeed, but also their Shopify site over the years has expanded and they've switched up their templates sometimes, but I love that they are still here. This would be an example of a secondary menu or a, a mega menu because of the way it looks. And in some cases, we might also be brought into another sub menu when we get to the backpacks page, maybe with additional categories, but they're not relying on a tertiary menu that would be really tough to navigate with our thumbs. Instead, you know, they're getting us here and then we can, we can further filter our knapsacks however we want by color or features. All done in, in Shopify. Every single product that I load up I can categorize it to sub to filter it. And then I can also subcategorize or tag it with red or female or leather. Let's see what they're using. Um, live chat. That's one of my favorites. Live chat is a fantastic um, tool. You're going to pay probably about 40 bucks a month for it. Um, sometimes more depending on how many inquiries you get and how much you're using it. But 
you get the idea. These things are becoming really, really integral for customer service. Um, Allbirds is another huge footwear company, international company that's using um, Shopify. Tentree, same thing, Australian apparel brand, embedding a video or a looping GIF in the background as the, instead of an image, really, really cool. Utilizing some animated illustrations here, little GIFs that make those little entry thumbnails quite cool. Um, okay, question from Tara. Which of the following, WordPress, Shopify, and or Squarespace is less likely to be hacked or more secure? Definitely not WordPress because it's open source, meaning that anyone from anywhere in the world can create the template and then all the widgets and plugins that you're using and the theme. So they have to all kind of be updated constantly and they're just very vulnerable. That's the nature of open source. However, it's more customizable. And then between Shopify and Squarespace, they are both equally secure. They're both closed source. They're both hosted at the parent company um, and you, you don't have to worry about it. Unless you lost your password, your site will not get hacked. It's not the same as having brute force attacks constantly on your site, like on WordPress, where people can find ways to find the vulnerabilities in your plugins and get in there. Okay, you guys, final, final two slides, I promise you. So Kajabi is the last piece here. If I can just get over here, come on computer, keep up. So I've mentioned Kajabi a lot. If you have a knowledge-based business and you are planning on selling any kind of course, membership or coaching program, this is where it's at. Kajabi is awesome. It is, you have the ability to create a website, but then you can also have this beautiful hosting experience of your knowledge base or of your digital products within it all in one price. And then of course you have that landing page functionality, which is really great too. So just a couple quick examples here for you of some Kajabi sites. Um, I'm a big, big fan of um, Kajabi now for our own courses in Academy and I can't believe I didn't do it sooner, but such is life. So if I look at, um, I mean, you're welcome to go there. The links are in your workbook as well. If you wanna just kind of revisit these pages to remind you of what's what. Um, and it's, you know, I, I don't disagree with this image right here, your business before Kajabi, where you've got like all these tools. Um, you can recognize some of these MailChimp, SamCart for products, ClickFunnels for landing pages, a WordPress site or a Wix or a Squarespace site, um, lead pages, and they truly are all kind of combined in Kajabi's environment, which is really, really nice. It's not quite as customizable from a function or from a form. So the beauty, you don't quite have that, but you can find your way around it um, and they're improving all the time. So let's dive in and look at a couple. Thanks, Dale. See you soon. So this gal, passion for savings. Um, not only is this a website, I don't know why that blue line is still on the site. That is weird because it wasn't there before. Um, but it is a, you know, so she's got what could be very much like a Squarespace site. She's got a background video that's looping. So that would be a GIF. Um, she's, you know, right away got her, uh, her text and uh, subheader there or, or kind of just information. She's got a few thumbnails that we can enter into that speak to us. Um, she introduces herself here with a background image and a call to action. And then she introduces her plans. So she is running a subscription website. This is recurring revenue and this is gold. This is exactly where we want to be if we don't want to keep hunting or serving clients every month. Um, and then of course, you know, footer, et cetera. So if I dive into her courses or whatever it is that she's selling, she's calling them products, but I guarantee these are programs. Um, amazing. Like everyone's an expert, you guys, you, you can, you know, a lot, if you can package it up into some kind of course, um, or anything, this is where I said to some of my journalist friends who are seeing less and less work as journalists, like, you know, take that blog and monetize it with some downloadable eBooks or some digital products, $10 at a time. Um, you've got lots to offer. Grant Cardone, um, he's a kind of like a, I don't know, a guru, I suppose. He teaches finance, real estate, leadership, all the things we can see. And he's got a number of programs that are really expensive. And some of these guys aren't afraid to be really brash and out there because it works on a lot of people. You've seen them on YouTube, just like I have. But um, with Kajabi, what's really nice is we could go in and learn more about the program. So we've got really nice elements that can be these types of like 
product blocks or I'm taken right to his checkout pages. Um, and it's all very integrated. This one is a beauty, Simply Organic. So if you notice up here in the URL, she's got a subdomain, learn.simplyorganicbeauty.com. So I'm guessing, I'm not going to go there, but simplyorganicbeauty.com is her parent site, just like socialschool.io is mine. But learn. is her domain extension, or sorry, subdomain, subdomain, that she can put in advance of that. And then she has a secondary website. So you can go straight to academy.socialschool.com and be taken right into our programs, or you can get led there from clicking on, you know, purchase. So she's got classes here, um, you know, enroll for free would be an option to get people in the door. And then now she's nurturing them along with her emails that can be all done in Kajabi's brilliant pipeline tools. Um, so as soon as someone fills out this form, their contact records created, they're tagged, they're then, you know, served up whatever email sequence you want to send them and then possibly tagged to join your main mailing list at the end or some other follow up program. So this is a real beauty. I, I, I just, I wanted to show you it because I think sometimes Kajabi doesn't get seen for how pretty and, and uh, you know, compelling it can be, but it's got some, it's come a long way and a lot of people are finally getting it. Um, this, this course, Papala, or this company, this is papalatis.life.com. So that's their main website. And then they are utilizing this guy as the place to get people through their training program. So they're teaching people how to do the pop Pilates method or how to teach it. And, um, you know, using all different types of, of uh, sections on the site to really hit it home. And this would be from a template. When you sign up for Kajabi, just like Squarespace or Shopify, you pick your template, you add your assets and away you go. If I click cert get certified, I'm probably brought right to as well. Oh, a page that gives me a little bit more information. And then I can register now in their training and hopefully I'm brought to their Kajabi checkout page, which is really cool. Um, another one, education by Matt Johnson. This guy is a photographer who's teaching other photographers how to, uh, you know, make better wedding films or, um, you know, other things that they can do to further monetize their photography biz business. Is he some kind of like MIT grad? Probably not. He just knows that there's additional revenue for him to capture um, with other photographers that maybe aren't as confident as he is or don't have the experience he does. So if we can find a way to productize our service, amazing. Now we've got a digital, you know, tool that we can sell and we can sell it regularly. Build once, sell often. I'll show you uh, Social School Academy. So again, this is our, um, our new course uh, platform, which I moved away from WordPress to come here. So within this page, this is our shop page where you can find all of our courses um, and all the same kind of elements and blocks apply. So just image block with a hover that you can you know, easily add different sections where you can have a video behind it. You can have things kind of enter the page as you just saw that come across, um, which is kind of fun. And then if I want to build a sales page that's just dedicated to one course, I can certainly do that. So I'm not going to send you straight to my order form yet. I'm going to just have a second click, not too many, but just enough. I'm going to embed a video to tell you about this program to really get you excited about it. Um, you know, you can sign up right away, call to action at the top, or you can learn a little bit more. And you can see the outline. This is sales page 101, right? So just then the testimonials come in. What else? Bonus material. There's your workbook. Who am I? There's your host. It's me. Nice to meet you. Are you ready? Let's do this. Here's how you can register. Oh, you've got questions? No problem. I've got answers. Um, this is part of this series. Let's do this. And then, of course, from there, you get brought to the order form. And uh, Hopefully it's nice and simple and clean. So this would be considered um, no nav, very limited footer and uh, one click sign up really after they get to this page. So I could send someone directly here too. It's got its own URL. So that's Kajabi. Um, I, I won't go into the kind of email side of it, but like I said, after you got, after you signed up on here, you're going to receive a series of emails. If you went to a pipeline page, 
that's just a landing page, you're going to, again, be kind of led through. And it's really fun building these pipelines or sequences because you're just adding different stages of the journey. So they're going to hit a landing page, then they're going to sign this form, then they're going to get an email, then 10 days later, another email, then they're going to get the link to the webinar, that kind of thing. So this is why it's so important, of course, for us to, um, you know, map out the journey in advance so we know exactly where people are coming from and what we want them to do. And um, hopefully, again, get them to our, our goals and theirs as well. You guys, I can't believe how long I just talked for. I'm really sorry. I hope that you're still uh, awake. But thank you for indulging us with all of those, or indulging me with all of those examples. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or type them in. Diana, we have an event-based business, so Kajabi might work best in that respect. However, we also have a merch store that requires a lot of inventory management, although all of this info has been great. I'm still feeling unsure about the direction we should go. What would you recommend in moving forward? Um, I'm so happy to talk to you after Diana too. I'd love to learn more about your event-based business on the phone. Um, Kajabi is not for everyone. You, if you have an event-based business, you can certainly sell tickets to it. You can sell products on Kajabi, like I just showed you. It doesn't have to lead to a course. You can use its its product or its e-commerce function easily. Um, and uh, and then you know, I think it just depends on what's more important. If you have inventory management, you're going to need a store, and that's where Shopify absolutely sings because you need to know. Yeah, your numbers, you need to have analytics and, and just kind of reports on, on sales and, and, you know, of course, inventory levels, et cetera. And that's um, Squarespace doesn't measure up either on, in that regard quite as well. So I would say probably Shopify for you. And then um, you can always add on a course or two if you had to in Kajabi, as we saw a lot of people doing. Thanks, Kirsten. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Where's the workbook again? Okay. Um, I can't believe I'm still unable to add in this file here. I don't know why. I'm trying to drop it on the GYOB workbook. It's just so weird that it wouldn't work. Um, it will be, and it is in the uh, in the social club. So if you're in our um, social club, which you would be in order to have found this link. I posted it as a comment today or as a post. It just said, welcome to the Wednesday workshop and here's your download, but I will post it with the replay as well. So when this video is up at the end of the day, you'll also see that download. Sorry about that. Oh, Diana posted it. You guys can do it, but I can't. That's sorry about that. Oh yeah. Thank you. There it is. Okay. You can just download. It's called uh, at 106 PM. Diana posted it. Thanks so much. Um, any other questions, you guys, if anyone has any kind of follow up stuff that they want to talk about, just send me an email or a direct message. If you want to hop on the phone and explore, uh, the website launch lab is, is going on sale today for two weeks. So you'll have some time to get into it. The sooner you join though, the sooner you'll get access to the, uh, pre-course materials that just give you a little bit more time to prep, which is nice if that's your thing. Um, best email address for us is hello at socialschool.io. Um, and, uh, oh, there we are. It is Jackie. Thanks for coming, Jackie. Um, and you know, so many fun things that are, that are happening in a lot of your worlds. If you're already, you know, website built and you're starting to market it like crazy, we'd love to hear about it. Just, you know, converse with us in social club and help us, you know, share the word about what you're doing in this really tough time. And that's the whole idea there is that we're just, trying to connect again and actually, you know, share knowledge as much as we share conversation. So with that, you guys, if there's no more questions, I'm going to sign off and uh, hopefully we'll see you again next week. Our Wednesday workshops going forward won't be as big as this. This was a long one just because we're really trying to give you as much information as you can, as we can in this kind of quarantine home stretch where now's a really great time to build or revamp your website. We're not going anywhere just yet. And um, yeah, if we can get you there, we sure would love to. So the replay will be posted. The deck of this slide presentation won't be because it's 158 pages, but the video replays will be up there. So 
Thank you all so much. It's been so nice. And another website launch lab, we won't do this again until the very end of the year. So it'll happen either in December or January, just twice a year that we do the live build because it's a big lift. It's 30 days and we're running concurrent programs with Shopify, Squarespace and Kajabi. So hopefully we'll see some of you there. If you need anything, please, um, please just holler. I'm um, just a click away or a direct message or whatever you need. And our team is standing by. Thanks everyone. Talk to you soon.